Okay, everybody, we're gonna start. I used to do this in theaters to make pocket money. <laughs> yeah. We give ourselves this mission to say, okay, some journalists are writing things, some bloggers are blogging, we are preaching. We believe in a more elegant world. We believe in a handmade world. We believe in the fact that people understand. When you buy 10,000 or 5,000 or 500, no matter the amount, the, something expensive for yourself, if you don't know what is behind, if you don't understand the amount of sweat, the amount of craft, the amount of know-how, the amount of philosophy, the amount of love that is behind, this is called vulgarity. But if you understand what you buy, if you understand what is behind this 10,000, 500, 20,000, no matter the price, but you, you understand behind this, there's a lot of work, there's a lot of know-how, there's a heritage, there's something which is invaluable then it becomes not, not, it's not vulgar. Not only is it not vulgar, but it's transcendental almost. It's a transcendence. It's bigger than life. It's more interesting than just having clothes. If all these subjects were just about nice clothes, believe me, I would not be here. It, clothes are boring when you take it as a subject. But if you try to understand what is behind, what it implies, what it creates, that becomes to be very interesting. Something is happening right now in men's style and um, it's very important that places like this are promoted, supported and advertised because uh, they try to do something that very few people are doing is to respect and to promote some old ways of doing things that can, be, that can feel outdated to the mass but are very important to protect and to promote. It's important for me because, first of all, my grandfather was a bootmaker. I saw my grandfather suffering on making a boot by hand every day. And believe me, uh, at this time, he was not making a lot of money. That was just a normal manual work, you know. And then also, I saw many people, I saw many craftsmen dying with this. That was, I'm 53 years old soon in May. I'm 52 right now. So I, I start to have a, a kind of a... In, I'm in the middle of the generation revolution and the digital revolution. So that's first. And secondly, we, we really, really believe that we see it when we do gathering like that all around the world, when we meet our friends and readers. I have so many people who say, oh, sir, you changed my life. You emptied my bank account? <laughs> because now I'm buying some quality shoes and shirts. And, uh, but also, uh, thanks to you and thanks to you guys at Paris Saint-Germain, I have a more beautiful wife, a better job, and a beautiful life. Elegance will save the world. What do I want to say with that? It's just quite a simple statement to say that we strongly believe at Paris and gentlemen with this book, with what we do on the web every day, a little bit of elegance, a little bit of education, interaction, how to behave with people, how to make people comfortable. That's one of the first rules of elegance. How do you make people at ease? Just if you have to, to take away something from my speech tonight, just take away this. One of the pillars of elegance is your ability to put anybody at ease when you are with them and, or whether you meet them for the first time. Put somebody at ease. That's super elegant. You understand? Make people feel good. Make them feel good, not by watching at how well dressed you are. No, no, no. Just make them feel good. Make them feel all right and at ease. Elegance is it's, it's kindness, it's compassion, it's love, it's a lot of things that go with it. We strongly believe that this kind of culture here makes a difference in the world, that's all. I have no clue what I'm going to say now, but it's not a problem. What was the question? <laughs>